Welcome to this lesson. We will be discussing business analysis responsibilities. Now there are a lot of business analysis tasks that we are responsible for and I'm not going to overwhelm you with all of those different tasks in any great detail. But what I will do is I will use an example project to show you what a lot of project business analysts get very involved with. And if you are fairly new to business analysis, you will be able to relate to this because this is the type of work that you'll start with. So if we look at the list on the screen, you can see that we've got seven different items here. We've got the licitation or elic eliciting requirements. We've got requirements management and communication, solution evaluation, traceability and monitoring, requirements lifecycle management, strategy analysis, and then of course requirements analysis and design definition. So this is a mix of some of the industry tasks or body of knowledge, um, knowledge areas, but it also contains some very specific things such as traceability and monitoring. Now it's an interesting mix, but it certainly resembles the business analysis responsibilities very well. So what we'll start with is I want you to imagine we are going to be doing a real world project. So if we jump to that screen, we let me tell you about the project. So you are the business analyst. You have been asked to play the role of the BA um, on a timesheet replacement project. So the situation is that a department within your company needs to change or replace their current time management system with a new one. So as a business analyst, your first responsibility will be to understand who are the people you need to work with. So you won't see that here on the screen, but that is the step, the very, very first step is to understand your stakeholders. So a good way to do that is you'll create a stakeholder list or a stakeholder matrix. And you can do that also with um, collaboration with your project manager. Sometimes they may have been involved in the project a bit longer than you and they may already have a stakeholder list. So once you understand who are the stakeholders that you're able to engage with, that's when you start to look at different ways to understand the current state. So what that means is you need to work out and you will be responsible for understanding how do that particular department currently do their timesheets. What are the processes that they follow? What systems do they use? Do they have any controls in place? You really have to understand it to a low level of detail so that you can then start to explore what are the exact pain points that they have. Like for example, let's say they are still using spreadsheets to record time. So what this means is that every week the employees would need to send a spreadsheet to their manager and their manager would need to reply via email to say yes they agree with the spreadsheet timesheet or that they approve it. Now that sounds very cumbersome doesn't it? It also sounds like there could be a lot of security issues, there could be inaccuracies, there could be data duplication or spreadsheets going missing and it's simply just not a very efficient way of capturing timesheets. And these are the types of things that you will discover when you start to work with those stakeholders to understand the current state. Now as part of this, and in theory, you should first understand the current state before you can understand the future state. However, in the real world, we do get a lot of future state even before we fully understand the current state. And that is because the stakeholders like to come to you and say, I want this new system to do all my timesheets because it's got all these great features. And your job and your responsibility would be to say, that's great, but let me understand exactly what are the issues you currently experience. And the reason for this is sometimes the problems haven't been fully defined before a stakeholder or a business group jumps to a solution that they think might solve all their problems. So it's really important for you to understand the current state in detail and then the future state. So let's just have a quick look at how do you do this first responsibility of understanding the current state and the future state. 
So this is where you will start doing things like running interviews and workshops to elicit and fully understand what are all the requirements or all the needs or the pain points. Um, you will then also do analysis and you'll do research because you might find that there's actually already a lot of information available about the current state. You don't necessarily have to run a session to get a certain number of issues identified or information collected. And it's actually recommended that you do a lot of research before you start to engage with stakeholders because it just saves a lot of time and it saves the stakeholder from repeating themselves um, in case they've had to answer those questions before. So once you've had your engagement and you've done your research and you've done some analysis on what you found, you will also need to document those requirements, both the current state and the future state. Now this can be done using textual requirements or models or prototypes or a variety of different ways to document what those needs are. You also, of course, need to validate and verify that you understand those needs and requirements correctly. Now, essentially what you're doing with all of these activities is to establish the requirements. Now, something just to note here is that you may have heard about agile or waterfall projects. And yes, requirements are managed in a slightly different way in these two different methodologies. And we will talk about agile and waterfall methodologies in a couple of videos from now so that you can fully understand this. But just for the purposes of this conversation, don't worry too much about the methodology that's being used. Um, you may also sometimes hear people refer to requirements as user stories. So now that you've done the current state and the future state, let's have a look at what have you actually in terms of responsibilities covered off for this project. So if we look at the responsibilities I listed up front, by doing just the current state and the future state analysis work where you did your elicitation, you would already have done elicitation require of requirements. You would have done requirements management and communication with stakeholders. And you would have done some analysis and design definition. Now, these other tasks like solution evaluation and traceability, requirements lifecycle management, all of these things will naturally follow from what you are working on now in this fictitious project. And strategy analysis might even come into play, but I'll cover that later as well. So in a nutshell, from a business analyst's responsibility perspective, you are responsible for engaging with stakeholders and understanding what are the true needs or problems or requirements and validating those and make sure that they are real. And then you also are responsible to define and work with your stakeholders to define what the future will look like or what they would ideally like a solution to be able to do. And then you take all of that, you document it, or you use, create user stories and follow the process or the methodology within your organization to facilitate this. But ultimately, those requirements that you've established, you'll learn to manage them appropriately and you'll bring them into um, to fruition, really, because they'll go through the life cycle and they'll be implemented. But more about that later, too. So I hope this gives you a bit of a hands-on idea of what's responsive, what responsibilities you will have as a business analyst when you get started on a project. Right, I'll see you in the next video.